Welcome to this discussion of the JEC language data types. In the previous unit, we talked about the language's syntax, and now we'll talk about what kind of data JEC programs are allowed to create and manipulate. And as usual, we'll start with an example. So here's some JEC code that does something. It's not terribly important what the program is doing. And let us focus on these uh, three statements here in which the programmer goes on to create an array called uh, A, uh, an integer variable called length, and two more integer va variables called i and sum. And what we see from this is that uh, the Jack language has, first of all, primitive types, of which we have three only. The int data type can hold uh, values in the range of 0 to 32,767. Uh, then we have uh, Boolean types, which are either true or false. And we have car types, which are essentially numbers that represent characters using the Unicode uh, character scheme, or the ASCII scheme, which happens to be the same in the subset of characters that we use uh, in this course. Now, you may ask yourself, well, uh, if an int value can be only uh, uh, non-negative, how do I represent negative numbers in Jack? Well, you can always precede a value with a minus, but uh, this will not be a constant. It will be actually an expression in which we uh, apply the minus uh, operator to the non-negative uh, value that follows it. So from the programmer's perspective, you know, negative numbers are just as easy to use as positive ones, but the implementation is uh, uh, somewhat, uh, a little bit more involved. Moving along, we also have class types. For example, in this uh, piece of code here, we see uh, uh, the A variable whose type is array. And uh, there are either class types that come from the Jack operating systems, like string and array, and there may be class types that the user has uh, uh, created. And when we say user here, we mean the uh, practicing uh, Jack programmer who may have well uh, designed classes like fraction and list and stack and whatnot. And uh, therefore, uh, he or she is free to create variables that have uh, uh, these uh, data types as they, uh, as they please. So uh, like you know, any other uh, high-level object-based language. We have primitive types as well as class types. Moving along, I'd like to uh, demonstrate uh, type conversions in Jack, which are uh, which may well be quite uh, wild. So, uh, first of all, characters and integers uh, can be converted into each other at will and as needed. Uh, and this is quite similar to what can be done in other languages. So uh, if we have a character uh, uh, variable called c, I can say c equals 33, where 33 is just an integer value. And this will give me the uh, representation of capital A uh, according to the uh, ASCII code. Equivalently, I can also create a string called s. I can assign the string uppercase A to uh, uh, s with two double quotes. And if I want to convert it into a character, then I must use the car at uh, function, which is part of our uh, operating system. And, uh, and I do it by you know, calling the car at function on the uh, s uh, character. And uh, this is a little bit uh, cumbersome, because uh, you know, ideally, you would like to say simply c equals quote a quote. But this idiom is not supported by the Jack language, uh, which you know may um, uh, you know create some inconveniences to someone who wants to do a lot of uh, string and character processing, and yet it will make the writing of the compiler uh, much easier. So uh, not not much easier, but easier. So uh, we will thank these uh, concessions uh, later on uh, when we develop the compiler. Now, an integer can be assigned to reference variables, in which case it is treated as a memory address. So uh, consider uh, this piece of code here. We create an array called ARR, and then we happily say ARR equals 5,000, which is somewhat crazy, isn't it? Because ARR is supposed to be an array. And yet, 
the Jack language supports this kind of uh, assignment. And if you do it, you basically tell, tell the system that uh, the uh, ARR array ought to start in base address 5000. So from now on, if you say uh, ARR sub 100 equals 17, well, uh, the compiler will generate code that will cause the uh, uh, RAM at location 5000 and 100, which is 5000 plus 100, to become 17. So as you see, this uh, kind of uh, casting is quite uh, exotic and, uh, and wild. And uh, in the wrong hands, it can create a havoc because uh, it allows programmers to take control over the RAM and do whatever they want with it. And yet, uh, uh, these tricks here will uh, once again prove extremely useful when we develop uh, the operating system uh, later on in the course. So, you know, it's nice that we can do all sorts of exotic hacks and we will certainly exploit them uh, down the road. What else? Uh, an object can be easily converted into an array and vice versa. So, uh, for example, if I create an object uh, x of type uh, fraction, then uh, recall that uh, fraction objects have two fields, numerator and denominator. So let's you know, put this uh, at the back of our mind. Then I create an array called ARR. I uh, construct the array to be uh, two entries uh, long. And then I say uh, error 0 equals 2, error 1 equals 5. And now I do something strange. I say x equals ARR. So x, which is a fraction, now points at the ARR array. And once I do this, I can say, for example, do x dot print. And this will invoke the print method of the fraction class on x. And even though x points to an array, it will treat this array as a fraction, and therefore it will print it as 2 slash 5. So once again, uh, quite a, a wild uh, uh, casting, and yet uh, makes perfect sense, because internally, arrays and objects are you know, handled almost the same. That's why in languages like Java and uh, you know, C Sharp, you can easily serialize an object into an array uh, and so on. So in Jack, this relationship is more explicit, I think, more clear. So that's it. Uh, that's what I wanted to say about uh, uh, data types in uh, Jack. And uh, to sum up, we can conclude that Jack uh, has uh, uh, a rather primitive, uh, primitive set of uh, types. We have only three of them. No, Java has eight, we have three, we could easily add more, but uh, we didn't find, uh, find it necessary from pedagogical uh, 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 values. And um, the Jack language is also weakly typed. In fact, it's very weakly types, typed. Uh, you know, any variable can be assigned to any variable irrespective of its type. And uh, on the one hand, you know, this sounds like chaos, on the other hand, it provides some very interesting uh, hacking uh, possibilities uh, that we will uh, definitely use uh, later on. You know, we could, easily, uh, we could easily impose all sorts of restrictions and not allow to do certain things, but we decided not to bother about it. So um, this is the uh, Jack type system, and uh, in the next unit, we'll turn to discuss classes and methods.